You can do some crazy hacking stuff just by searching on Google. Like, check this out. Webcams are perfectly safe, right? Wrong. <laughs> Look at all these webcams I can just jump into. Like, check this out. Someone's like dog clinic or something. That's crazy. Let's try this one here. <laughs> Someone's like house. <laughs> what the heck? I can even change cameras. What the heck? <laughs> That's not scary. What about this one? It's a supermarket. What the heck? <laughs> Ah, there's a guy. He's wearing a mask. Good job, guy. Anybody know where this is? Let's try to find some passwords. And look at that. Database passwords all over the stake in place just by a Google search. That's scary. You need to learn, learn, learn hacking. Hacking. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Network Chuck. I hope you have your coffee ready because in this video we're talking about Google hacking or Google dorking, what some people call it. This is a legit thing that hackers actually use and I'm gonna show you how to do it. But why am I talking about hacking? Well, I'm becoming a hacker. This video is actually part of a series where I'm showing you how I'm going to become a hacker. And a huge, massive shout out to IT Pro TV who's sponsoring this part of my hacking journey. I'm actually using them as my primary learning source right now. So if you wanna check them out, I've got a discount code, Network Chuck, and a link below. You get 30% off everything they have forever. And they have a lot of stuff. Not just hacking, but like CCNA, CCMP, A+, everything. Now again, Google hacking is a real thing that real hackers use. So first question, is this legal? Like will the FBI come bust down your door as soon as you try this? In most cases, no. What I'm about to show you is actually legal. Uh, well, up to a point, you can cross that line and I can sh I'll show you the line, don't worry. But it is still legit hacking. It's one of the first steps that any hacker will take when they decide to hack a target. And of course, I'm talking in the context of being an ethical hacker. A hacker who does things for good, not for bad. You see, the first step that any good hacker is going to take when they're about to hack somebody is they're going to try and learn as much information about their target as they can. This is often referred to as recon or reconnaissance, or you might see it as footprinting or even fingerprinting. Again, just means gathering information, gathering intel, because the more you know about your target, the better you can hack them later on with other hacking techniques. Now, the big reason why what we're doing is not illegal is because we're doing passive recon, which in most cases means that we're just trying to get information that's been made public that's publicly available, which in most cases, it's gonna be something we can just Google search. That just comes up. And what we're hoping as hackers is that this information was made public by accident. Someone may have accidentally exposed their passwords or maybe left their webcam open to the internet. That's what we're hoping for when we're doing these searches. And if we search in just the right way, using the right keywords and some Google search operators, which I'll talk about here in a moment, we can find some crazy, crazy stuff. Now, again, you can take what we're doing here and make it illegal real fast. I'll show you where that line is here in a moment and don't ever cross that line. So keep that in mind. Now, some people might find this step in the hacking process kind of boring because you're just gathering information like Daniel over at IT Pro TV. And uh, I will be quite honest with you. This is probably, at least for myself, and I've, I've anecdotally found this to be true with others in my experience. They say, oh, footprinting, it's kind of boring, right? But you know what, Daniel? I think this part's actually pretty stinking fun. So ignore Daniel, let's go have fun. Oh, hey, and I have a challenge for you. Two people will win a Network Chuck mug, US only, if you perform a task based on the contents in this video. So be looking for that challenge. It's coming up here in a moment. Now, most of us already know how to use Google. When we want to find something, we type it in. Maybe I'm searching for my favorite coffee brewing method, French press, and I'll get a ton of results from the internet, <laughs> everyone. But as a hacker, we don't wanna search like this. We wanna narrow down our search and find just what we're looking for. We can do this with Google search operators. The first one we're gonna use is called Site, just like that. Maybe I don't wanna see French press results for the entire internet. Maybe I wanna narrow it down to one particular website. So I'll use the search operator Site colon and then specify the website I wanna search in. Maybe Starbucks starbucks.com boom what just happened well if i scroll through here you can see that when i search french press it only pulled up sites that were starbucks.com that's it so what's happening here i've got my search operator site colon notice no space and then my domain right there and then this is just my search term over here all by itself go ahead try it you can do that with any site it's really cool but this isn't hacking you're right let's let's hack let's become a bit more nefarious but still legal, let's try it out. Let's say that we still wanna search the site Starbucks, but I don't care about French press anymore because now I'm hacking. 
I'm going to use another search operator to see if I can find something. This next one is called n URL. So if I go back here and I type in n URL colon, I'll search for a keyword like maybe admin and let's see what happens. Hmm, what is this? New user request, huh? <laughs> Store Development Resource Center. Now this is kind of interesting. I don't think uh, customers were supposed to be able to find this. Let's go back. What did I do here? So same deal as before, site is starbucks.com, but then I use the in URL search operator and I put a keyword in admin. So let's say I jump into the next URL. I'll just copy this URL real quick so you can see it better. This matched my search because starbucks.com is the site and inside this URL, I have the keyword admin. Now, why would I search for that? Well, hopefully I can find a site that they don't want me to see that maybe I could find vulnerabilities. Let's try another one. This one is in text. So looking back at our Google search, instead of searching for in URL, I'll put in text and I'll search, let's just say also for admin. And this maybe reveals some fun stuff. Let's take a look. I don't know what this is. A prospectus in, I think that's German. <laughs> that's interesting. Here's a lease from 2007, 2008. So what is the search doing? Well, the in text search operator searches for anything on these pages that has the keyword admin inside of it on starbucks.com. More specifically, it's searching inside the body of the web page. Now I'm gonna go through a few more options, but then I'll show you some crazy stuff we can find with the Google hacking database. Yep, it's a thing, I'll show you. But first let's try changing the in text to in title. We can actually search by the website's title. This is helpful for maybe when you wanna find all the login pages. So I don't know what paper cut login is, let's go here. But where that searching is right here at the title, which might be kind of hard for you to see, but paper cut login, that's what it's looking for. Login in the web page title. And typically most login pages will have that. And then one more fun one, which I think is probably one of the coolest is you can search starbucks.com for types of files. So let's try file type, that's our search operator. And I'll specify, hmm, let's try PDFs. Find all the PDFs at Starbucks. And what I get is every publicly available PDF we can find on starbucks.com, that domain and all other subdomains. And you might be able to find something interesting. I mean, here's a confidentiality NDA from Starbucks. Um, here's a, a court case. That's interesting. I even found a bike to work list. Now, this might seem silly. Like, Chuck, this is not hacking. We're just looking up information on companies. That's the point, though. You see, this information, while it might seem uh, silly and, and not harmful at all, it can be. I can take all this information I'm learning about these companies and use it in further attacks. Maybe I want to use some social engineering, buddy up with some uh, bikers on the way to these locations, and uh, I can try to trick them to give me some confidential information. You never know. Now, I want to warn you real quick, and this is where you got to be careful. What we just did is not legal, but it's right there on the line. But how do you cross that line? When do you become an unethical hacker, a black hat? It's when you take that information we're learning about this company and try to use it against them. Maybe you use that information to try and get more information out of them, or you could use it for another attack. At that point, unless you have permission, that is illegal. But again, what we've been doing is just passive, passive footprinting or passive recon, meaning we're just accessing stuff that's made publicly available. And where that becomes valuable for us as pen testers, ethical hackers, is that some information might be accidentally made available. Now, if you flip a switch and did active recon or active footprinting, which means we're actively trying to reach out to the company and learn information about them using a variety of techniques. Maybe we're going to use social engineering and try to go to a Starbucks store and try to talk to somebody or connect with someone on LinkedIn and try to, to get them to give us information. That would then be active recon, and that is illegal unless you have explicit permission from the company to do this. So keep it passive, people, unless you have permission. Now let's check out the Google hacking database, and we will Google the Google hacking database best way to find it. First thing that pops up. And this is incredibly cool because here, here's all it is. It's a database of potential Google search strings using those same Google search operators we talked about. And they could expose potential vulnerabilities, passwords, usernames, emails, anything you could possibly imagine. We can use these to discover information. It's using techniques like these, like we saw at the beginning of the video, that we can discover some pretty crazy stuff. Like if you search webcam, um, they give you a variety of searches you can use to find webcams that are just open and out there. If I search this, bam, we get some webcams. And it's it's kind of scary, kind of weird. And it's using what we just talked about. Here we have the end title search operator, and we're looking for anything that has webcam seven in it. And then this is actually kind of new. We're using the end URL search operator, but then we have the dash sign in front of it or negative sign. And that basically means don't include anything that has the admin HTML in the URL. And the same thing goes for the password I uncovered. We're doing a search for file type, which is an EMV file. And if made publicly available, it can reveal database passwords and usernames, which is obviously a bad thing. Now, again, 
don't go take these and then try to use them. That's, that's the line you don't want to cross. It's not illegal to find it, but it's illegal to use it. Here's another fun one. Let's use this. We're searching for this string right here, and the file type is going to be a log. So we're searching for log files that contain failed login attempts, which can give us some extremely valuable information as a hacker. So let's click on the first one here. It's from fsu.edu, which I think is Florida State. And we get a bunch of information. And here's another one. And, you know, again, this might not seem like valuable just at first glance. This can help you with your hacks down the road with other techniques. This one's pretty fun, too. Um, this is searching for uh, registry files. File type, registry. And then here's the keyword search. And as you may know, the registry file is <laughs> how your Windows system is configured, your Windows server is configured. And it might not be helpful to have that exposed to the internet. So like, here's an example, some fun stuff in here from MIT. Again, I don't know how dangerous it is for them to have this available, but any information can reveal things they may not have intended to reveal. And just a few more, these are just fun. Um, this one is cool because uh, it's very revealing. What is this? In title, we're including the Nessus scan report. Nessus is a vulnerability scanning tool. It'll scan your system and tell you what, how you're vulnerable. <laughs> and um, we're searching for that in the title. And then the keyword, this file was generated by Nessus. So just scrolling through here, like uh, let's see, park, parkland.edu. We've got their Nessus scan and we can see, hey, maybe they have some vulnerabilities that we can possibly exploit. And it's just in a nice format for us. <laughs> uh, maybe we look at it, let's see. Here's another one. Yeah, it just tells us maybe what they're vulnerable with and we can exploit those. I mean, we shouldn't, you, you shouldn't. You're an ethical hacker. You might wanna let them know, report this to them. But you can see how this is crazy bad for them, but very viable for us. Now there are a ton of Google dorks in here or Google hacks. Um, notice they are called dorks here. You can filter these by category. You can go through here and say, I wanna see if there's um, vulnerable servers or let's just look at files containing usernames. And you'll be amazed at what you can find with all these. Oh, let's do one more. Uh, maybe a couple more. This is fun. Uh, let's search for, um, this one's actually really cool. <laughs> what this is doing, it's using the search operator all in URL, which is the same as in URL, but it's just going to include everything you include after it. It's kind of like doing quotes on a search. So just know it's doing the same thing as in URL. But what this is coming up with is terminal services or remote desktop, as you can already see here. Web pages that are set up for you to log in to a organization's remote desktop terminal. Let's jump into one of these right now. Yep, <laughs> we can try to remote into one of these machines. Now we may not have login information right now, but it's something we could try to brute force later. Yeah, check this out. It's just crazy. It's crazy what you can find. NewTestamentChurch.org, Windows 2000, shame on you. <laughs> okay, I I'm gonna stop. You can have hours of fun doing this and you probably will. Let me know how it goes for you. Actually, I would love to see some uh, search strings below. Let me know what you try. Because if you're creative enough, you can find some pretty crazy things. But again, this is only one tool we can use to gather information about companies. So as you learn about footprinting and recon, learn about the other tools. One of the biggest tools at your disposal, and actually this is kind of a valuable tool for job searching as well, is just being able to uh, find these companies on LinkedIn or Dice or any of these job boards because you can find some pretty revealing stuff. For example, Let's do site linkedin.com. I'll do in title is Starbucks. So looking in the title of the page, Starbucks. And then I'll search for keyword maybe, I don't know, network engineer. And let's see what happens. Well, look here, we found a few things, like a few network engineers at LinkedIn. Now, why do we care? How does it help us? Well, look at Mr. Dave Grice here. Dave, if you're watching, hi, we should talk actually. Uh, He's the senior network engineer, been there since 2014. And we can look at his skill set, BGP, OSPF, Ansible, Azure, AWS, Cisco, Arista. Why do we care about all that? Well, he's been there for five years and nine months. We can assume that he uses all those skills at Starbucks. So we can assume that Cisco uses all these things. As a pen tester, we just gained some valuable information about our hacking target or our client because you're, you're an ethical hacker. And we can start to form an idea, a profile of who we're, de who we're dealing with here. We can maybe search for Cisco vulnerabilities. We could exploit some Ansible things. The more you know, the more you can hack. And now that you know a few employees at Starbucks, maybe you can go on Twitter and try to find these people and try to find the photos they post. Maybe they posted something with a, uh, a badge that you can see. Or maybe they have their monitor in the background. You can see some information on the monitor. You see, the majority of these hacks can happen because of the mistakes of just people. People doing people things. No one's perfect, and you can expose that. 
And beyond social engineering, we have a bunch of other tools we can use. Like there's one called uh, the Harvester, which I learned about from IT Pro TV. Thanks guys. Let's try it out real quick and I'll show you what we can find out. Uh, we'll specify starbucks.com as our domain, our source, let's just say Google for now. And let's take a look. We already found a few emails, which is crazy helpful when we're trying to do hacking. And we found some subdomains and their respective IP addresses. Huh, what is this one? COVID1. That's interesting. Actually, I'm curious. What is this? Let's go to it. Let's see what they've been up to. Huh, well, it's not going to it. Oh, well. And we can change it the source. Like we can use a tool called Netcraft, which will do something very similar. <laughs> it gave us a lot more subdomains, a lot more hosts. That's crazy. Look at all that. Now, I just showed you a few of the ways you can gather information about your targets. If you want to learn more, check out IT Pro TV and their certified ethical hacking course, which you can check out at the link below. You'll get 30% off forever, so check it out. And again, huge thanks to IT Pro TV for sponsoring this part of my journey because I'm going to do it. I'm becoming a hacker step by step, and I hope you come along with me. If you like what I'm doing here, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button because it does help out and hit that little notification icon so you can know when I'm talking about stuff and when I go live like I do on Mondays. Well guys, that's about all I have. Actually, you know what? I've got a challenge for you. I want you to test out the skills we just talked about. The first two people to comment below with the correct answer to this question will win a Network Chuck mug, US only, so keep that in mind. But here's the question, or the task. I would like to know the senior network engineer at Walt Disney Animation Studios. Find that out for me. Post below who it is, and also the string you use, the Google search string, to find that information. First two to do that will win a Network Chuck mug. All right, guys, that's all I got. Keep studying, keep learning, and keep hacking. I'll catch you guys later.